The race to build humanoid robots is accelerating fast. Everyone is staking a claim on the future of human-shaped intelligence. Because once these tools can think, the question isn't what jobs they'll take, it's what roles we are willing to give up. At Tesla's 2025 all-hands meeting, Elon Musk made his plan clear. He wants 5,000 humanoid robots built by the end of the year. The first legion, he called it. That number is expected to balloon 10 times by the following year. And what makes Musk's vision different isn't just the number of robots he plans to produce, but also the nearly infinite applications he envisions for his robot legion. At first, the Tesla bots will be limited to doing work in factories. But at last year's We Robot event, we saw bots mixing drinks, dancing, and even talking to attendees. Which isn't to say that the Tesla bots can already do these things now, those robots had some help for the demos, but it does show the wide array of uses Musk has in mind. They'll be sent to disaster zones where humans can't go safely, and are even central to SpaceX's mission to land on Mars. The current model, the Gen 3 Tesla bot, has come a long way since its first reveal, when the only robot was a person in a spandex suit. Today's unit is real, it stands 5 foot 8, weighs somewhere around 125 pounds, and features 28 actuators that mimic the full range of human movement. Its hands, arguably the most complex part, have up to 22 degrees of dexterity. For comparison, the average human hand has between 23 and 27 degrees of dexterity. This means that anything you can comfortably do with your hands will likely be possible for the Tesla bot to do with surgical precision. Its body includes eight cameras, and it's driven by Tesla's full self-driving AI technology. What sets Tesla apart is the forward-thinking vision it took to get here and the vertical integration that makes it all possible. Tesla has spent years training real-world AI systems with data from millions of cars already on the road. But its extensive production experience means that it can build its robots in-house while testing and refining their manufacturing process by putting them to work building Tesla vehicles or even replicating themselves. In 2024, the global market for humanoid robots was valued at just over $10 billion. That figure is expected to balloon to nearly $39 billion by 2032. And this isn't being driven by one company or one product. Breakthroughs in AI, robotics, and vision systems are happening faster than ever alongside falling costs and rising demand. And in 2025, the results are starting to roll off assembly lines. In Norway, the startup 1X is deploying a humanoid robot named NeoGamma into real homes. They are aiming for hundreds, maybe thousands of deliveries by the end of this year. Then there's Figure, a company that may not be a household name, at least not yet, but they arrived on the scene last year with a new robot that leveraged OpenAI's ChatGPT to bring a conversational voice to a humanoid robot, even if the conversation itself was a bit slow. But Figure's new AI brain called Helix is a leap forward. It allows humanoid robots to understand their environment and manipulate objects they've never seen before. All of this is moving out of the testing phase and into the marketplace. The company is scaling production to 12,000 units annually and plans to produce 100,000 robots in the next four years. That's a number that would have sounded impossible even just last year. The core of their strategy is the Helix system. It's not just one AI model, it's a two-part computer brain. The first part is for perception, a vision language model with 7 billion parameters. It sees the world, understands speech, and reads context. The second part is for motion, an 80 million parameter motor model that takes all of that process data it receives and tells it precisely how to act, calculating how to reach, grip, and respond. One half understands, the other half moves, and together they give the robot the ability to interact with the world in real time in ways that start to look a lot like how you or I would engage with our own surroundings. With 35 degrees of motion, the robot has the flexibility needed to truly use its fingers, swing its arms, and walk to wherever it needs to go. And Helix was trained on just 500 hours of high-quality data. That's a fraction of the time it takes to train other AI platforms. For comparison, it took the equivalent of almost 10 years to train ChatGPT3. 
Yet the Helix system has already demonstrated the ability to handle tasks it was never explicitly trained for. In one demo, Figure's Helix-powered humanoid was told to organize a refrigerator. No prior training, no step-by-step -step instructions, just language, vision, and real-time decision-making. And it did it. Not perfectly, but well enough to trigger a sense of awe, the kind of performance that makes you wonder what the next version will be capable of. Unlike other companies relying on data centers and cloud computing, Figure has embedded the entire Helix system to run inside the robot itself using onboard GPUs. That means no lag, no need for consistent Wi-Fi. It's all just set up right out of the box. And perhaps most telling of all, they cut ties with OpenAI to build it. They didn't want a rented brain. They wanted to have their own. If Tesla is going for scale and figure is chasing autonomy, then NVIDIA is building the infrastructure for all of them. Think of what Android did for smartphones. That's what NVIDIA is now attempting to do for robots with a project called Groot. The name is obviously a play on the Marvel movie character, but it also stands for Generalist Robot. Groot is a foundational model, an AI system built to handle many types of real-world tasks. It's designed to adapt on the fly. NVIDIA trained it using three sets of data. Sensor data from the physical world, synthetic environments where anything can be simulated, and by scraping and analyzing large amounts of video. Groot is a universal base layer, a plug-and-play brain that any humanoid machine can use. To do so, it uses two distinct processing systems that work together in ways that resemble the human nervous system. System 1 is reflex. It reacts almost as if it were moving on instinct. System 1 allows Groot to make snap decisions and respond in an instant. System 2 is the reason module that allows it to interpret instructions, scan the environment, and take the time to make plans and see them through. Together, they create something more fluid than code. It decides what matters now and what can wait. NVIDIA is doing more than releasing a model, it's launching a full ecosystem. They've made Groot open source, inviting developers around the world to build on top of it. They've built simulation tools like the Groot Blueprint, designed to generate training data at massive scales. And they've collaborated with Google DeepMind and Disney Research to create Newton, a physics engine to make robotic motion more lifelike in virtual environments. To handle the physical side, NVIDIA has introduced Jetson Thor, a chip powerful enough to run Groot in real time embedded inside the robot. And it's fast, too. In one test, Groot produced over 780,000 training examples in just 11 hours. That volume of data would normally take weeks to collect, and Groot did it in half a day. NVIDIA's target isn't just one client, it's the entire sector, and their customer list reads like a who's who of robotics. 1X Technologies, Agility Robotics, Aptronic, Boston Dynamics, Figure AI, Fourier Intelligence, Sanctuary AI, if you're building a robot in 2025, you are probably using NVIDIA somewhere along the way. For a long time, companies like Boston Dynamics and Unitree focused on something almost mythic, creating machines that could move like us, to go from shuffling or wobbling along a factory floor to being able to leap, twist, sprint, and perform a backflip required mastering physics, and these companies have nailed it. Boston Dynamics is the godfather of mechanized robots. The company spun off from MIT in 1992 and announced their first robot dog, Big Dog, in 2005. It was intended to be a sort of robot pack mule for the US military. It offered impressive stats, but its noisy gasoline engine ultimately prevented it from ever being deployed. Boston Dynamics discontinued Big Dog at the end of 2013, and three years later they released Spot a leaner electric model that even became available for sale to the general public, briefly starting in 2020, at a cost of $74,500. That's over 90 grand in today's money for a robot dog that can open the door. Boston Dynamics announced their humanoid robot Atlas in 2013. The hydraulic-powered robot was initially designed to assist in search and rescue operations, but over the years it has continued to evolve and become more capable of even more tasks. Last year, the company announced an all-new version of Atlas. Like Spot, it's an all-electric model, and its ability to move around like a human, but with superhuman strength, is becoming more and more impressive with each new video the company releases. 
Over in China, Unitree is preparing to show off its latest humanoid model, the G1. Agile, affordable, and surprisingly lifelike, it's built for mass production. G1 is set to make its full debut at the 2025 Robotics Summit and Expo, but early previews show a robot capable of remarkably human-like movement. Smooth turns, steady balance, and even complex poses. A company called GXO is already deploying humanoid robots, specifically its Agility Robotics digital model, into warehouse operations. These robots are unloading packages, moving inventory, and doing it alongside human workers in an industry struggling with labor shortages. The appeal is obvious. A worker that doesn't get tired, injured, or sick. A worker that doesn't go on strike. It's the same thing when it comes to healthcare and elder care. As populations age and caregiving demands increase, humanoid robots are stepping in to perform the kind of routine tasks that drain time and energy from nurses and home aides. Things like getting supplies, monitoring vital signs, or assisting with physical mobility. They are not replacing empathy, but they are relieving strain. And in the most dangerous environments, reactor sites, fire zones, chemical spills, robots are increasingly being trained not just to assist, but to replace human presence entirely. What makes a machine humanoid isn't just its height or limb count, it's what it can do. And more importantly, how it adapts. Because while metal arms and plastic joints can be molded into a human shape, mimicking the complexity of human function is something else entirely. Modern humanoid robots are beginning to operate using what's called generalist AI. These are models trained to learn. They understand spoken instructions, they can see, and in many cases they can take on jobs they were never directly trained for. Imagine trying to explain how to load a dishwasher to someone who's never seen one. You'd use words, gestures, maybe point to a few plates. That's what Helix and similar models are learning to do with no prior training. For better or worse, we are now giving robots the tools to think on the fly. As models like NVIDIA's Groot become more accessible, Boston Dynamics and Unitree no longer need to concern themselves with developing their own synthetic brain. Which means the robotic companies that had been focused on locomotion may still have a chance to dominate the future not because they solved AI, but because they already built the bodies to house it. They don't feel, they don't choose, built to work, trained to adapt, and now they're learning to move through our world without us. Tesla is scaling them, Figure is guiding them, and Nvidia is opening the floodgates. They are not here to replace us, but they will change what we are needed for. And that shift is already underway.